Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Hello, and welcome to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic, and we have a very special guest today coming to us all the way from Brazil. Giselle Gomez is going to join us here in just a second. We're going to talk about activating the youth. Let's get started. At the Strategic Hot Box, we learn, we love, and we kick ass. All of you have come to know that. You've embraced it as a, a way of life. And today, I really want to dig into how do we activate this next generation. In some of the podcasts, we've talked about uh, young professionals, youth in leadership. We've talked about how we bring people up and emerging in different ways and not calling it young leaders, but just calling it leaders. And all of those pieces are important. Now, how do we activate those individuals to to drive their own growth. Activating the young is the future. It's important to me. It's important to all of us in the industries that we serve. I've been fortunate enough to work in an industry, in the credit union industry, financial services, that inspires through social mission and social purpose and engagement in this next generation. And that isn't true everywhere, of course, but it and it isn't true of all industries, but we do have that fortune working in a not-for-profit institution. And I think that social or, or, or any sort of mission-driven engagement, any sort of activation of the youth is important inside the organization as well as externally. And what I mean by that is internally through employee engagement is so important. It's definitely a buzzword in business and leadership today. How do we recruit and retain top talent and and finding ways to do that with an authentic mission and purpose-led initiatives? And even in my organization that we have now, and many organizations are instituting a VTO or volunteer time off and giving employees eight hours to go serve in any way that they think is right and giving them essentially that day of, of time to be able to go do that. And it does create volunteer opportunities and 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 giving and, and promoting that giving back. Externally, I mean, is more from like a consumer perspective and how are organizations activating their consumers? And we've talked about marketing and fundraising here on the podcast, but one of the organizations that I think does a really great job of this is Bombas Socks. They were on Shark Tank and maybe you saw that. They've had done an excellent job of taking their social mission and, and really pushing it through. The name actually is derived from the Latin word for bumblebee, and bees, of course, live in a hive and work together to make the world a better place to, to party hop or flower hop, right? And get all the pollen and then make delicious honey. They're also small, but their combined impact can be significant. And the, the mantra for the organization is be better and be e -E better that they put uh, it and they put that mantra inside every package or clothing item, anything that they do. So it carries through to their consumers that it, they live true to that social mission. It's a really fun and relevant way to do so. I do have a guest, however, that's also doing this to the next level. And I really want to dig into how Giselle, how the organizations that she works with and for have been able to really engage the next generation as well as the community in being involved in that mission. She has a tremendous heart and is a believer in giving back and giving to those in need. And she is an expert in this area. So I'd like to formally introduce Giselle Gomez. Now, she studied international business at the University of Economics in Katowice in Poland. And she's got her, but she also has a bachelor's degree in social scientists, so, social sciences from Uni. Unicinos. I see I'm stumbling over the entire sentence in anticipation of saying a word that uh, is potentially of Portuguese root. So a bachelor's degree in social sciences from Unicinos in Brazil, master's in diversity and inclusion from Feveli. 
And she's also a professional coach. So it's a Brazilian Institute for Coaching and an International Coach Academy. So she runs a consultancy company on these areas of gender and intercultural sciences. And she's certified in gender balance from INSEAD, from Singapore, actually. And, of course, she's involved in a lot of things globally for credit unions, such as the World Council and YCUP. She serves as a steering committee leader with me. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming Giselle. Hello. Hello, Brandy. So nice to be here with you. I'm so thankful that you're here. Where are you exactly in the enormous country of Brazil? Okay. I live in the south part of Brazil. Uh, It's Porto Alegre, the name of the city. And we have a tremendous summertime here. It's really hot and it's really sunny. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's definitely not the summertime in North America. And so I would, I'm dreaming of being with you in Brazil. Tell okay, us. Okay, so I'm sharing my sun with you. <laughs> yes, your sunshine is coming through. I love it. Tell us about you and your career and your progression in leadership. Okay, I run my own business here in Brazil. It is a consultancy firm on the areas of diversity and inclusion and also cross-cultural movement. I have been an official uh, entrepreneur since uh, uh, 2014, Uh, but another day I was preparing my professional bio and I realized that I have been undertaking since I was 14 years old. Wow. I used to give private classes in my neighborhood and then, and then I worked for 20 years as an employee in different areas and in different companies. But for me, something significant uh, from the professional and personal view uh, is to be part of the credit union movement. Uh, it has changed my life for better, for sure, and I have been in the industry for 11 years. Well, this is a small summary. Yeah. And to be honest, Randy, this simple question, sometimes it's, it's quite difficult for me in which I have to summarize, right, myself. Um, another day I was reading Brené Brown and she quoted Marcy Alhober. She's an American a writer. And she wrote a book entitled One Person, uh, Multiple Careers. And she charts uh, a new path uh, to career satisfaction, uh, becoming a slash. So with slashes, I can say I am woman, entrepreneur, speaker, student, and mother. I think this is something important. I love it. What a simple and beautiful way to, to wrap it all together. Thank you for that. I also really appreciate for you able uh, in having this conversation on the podcast in English and how many languages do you have to bounce between in your work life? Well, um, I speak, I have to use English, as you know. Uh, My husband is from Mexico, so I learn uh, Spanish from him. And I also learn French and Portuguese. And Portuguese. Wow, that's amazing. So what makes leaders and young leaders specifically special? Well, Brandy, I think their boundless energy and their fresh perspective I think they also have incredible potential. They inspire hope for a better world. And I think they also make us change our lenses. Uh, When we uh, are living with them, sometimes we have to change our lenses and try to see as they do. Sometimes it's not easy, right? Yeah, you're right. And I love that I the concept or metaphor of changing your lens because sometimes we can get wrapped up in our own perspective and forget the perspective or lens of others. Yes, that's true. What are some specific challenges that a young leader or that you've had to overcome? I think um, in my opinion, it is not easy to engage this new generation But I see it as well as something good because, for example, this next generation, they have to understand the value proposition and the purpose uh, of doing things. 
which makes us think about that as well. Uh, why am I doing this? The why questions uh, before the what, right? Mm -hmm. And for, for me, from my side, that I am from an older generation, uh, I think maybe we should help these young people, these young leaders are just young, to build emotional intelligence. I know this is a topic that you work pretty good. I, I've heard some lectures from you. I've learned a lot from you. And I think maybe we should help them build this emotional intelligence. I don't know. Yeah, I do believe in emotional intelligence very much. And the more that we can help someone begin to have the perspective to see that in themselves is so important. Are young leaders in Brazil different than other countries that you've experienced? Well, um, in some ways, I think yes, and others no. They're just young people. But thinking about a cross-culture perspective, I see a lack of attitude in this young generation in general. But talking specifically about Brazil, we are a collectivist country, which means that people expect someone to take care of their needs. And sometimes it means expecting someone to do things you should be doing. Well, in contracts uh, with United States, for example, an in individualist uh, society, people are supposed to look after, after them themselves. So sometimes I wonder if this cultural aspect affects uh, our young people. I'm not sure, okay, Brandy, but I think about that. It concerns me as a leader and as a mother. And I think being a mother is also being a leader, right? Yeah. Being also a mother. Yes. Definitely. And I think that cultural component that you're noting is an important one. Yes, in the United States and some other countries, United Kingdom, maybe, for example, there's an individualism or individualistic perspective. And with that, there is that, that accountability or people want or think they're in control of driving their own success. And then with, you know, in, in the Brazilian culture or in some other organizations that have that more collective piece, they are looking to the community, the support group. The, gr the good side of that is that you can rally the troops in a collective society a lot more potentially than a more competitive individual society or culture. Yeah, that's true, Brandy. That's true. And the... The, so why then in, and, and you've done a great job in activating or rallying the, 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 the community in Brazil, why should we engage in this next generation? Well, um, for example, I'm going to, to talk about a little bit about our model, okay. Um, Cicredi has a program in place called Youth Committees. It is designed for young people between the age of 18 and 35, and the main objective is to engage, attract, retain, and develop these young leaders. And I think it has to be with the sustainability of our industry, of the credit union movement. And within this program, uh, we built strategies to develop leadership in these young people, which helps them in their personal and professional life. So I think it's good for them as individual, individuals, and, but it's also good and necessary for the, the credit unions. We have uh, to think about that, the sustainability of our movement. People are getting older and we need new perspectives and new people in our business, right? Um, Cicredi has 500 young people involved directly into the program and we had more than 10,000 young people impacted through training sessions, lectures and social projects. Wow. And how long has the, pro the program been in place to build that kind of success? Brandy, it has been in place for two Two years and a half, more two years and a half, more or less. And the what's really interesting about the model that is different than my experience in other countries is the engagement of members in the organizational mission, especially in financial services. Normally, people will go to their credit union or their bank, they'll do their business, and then they'll leave. Where in yeah. this model, in this program, 
it's actually the community coming in and, and investing in, in the financial institution. Yeah, that's true. That's the idea. We bring them to the credit unions and they also help us build something to the community. So we get and we get from them and we also give. This is, this is the exercise. And what are some of the things that you give and allow as part of the program? Well, uh, as I mentioned, we have like a training program. It lasts like one year and a half. So for the young member, for the young person, they can learn a lot. They can have they can have learning sessions, lectures, but at the end of the program, they are invited, they are encouraged to build a social project that has a social impact within the community. So they have to give something back. So, for example, Sicredi gives them uh, trainings and lots of opportunities. For example, last year we took three uh, members uh, to the World Council uh, Conference in the Bahamas. So the, the idea is that they go there, they learn, they have the experience, then they come back to the communities and they share their stories and they share the potential of being part of the credit unions. But also they are invited and encouraged to build this social uh, program. They can decide what they're going to do, but this is the idea. It has such a more large scale impact that way, community impact. It's not just helping those people, but then that asking them to turn around and help the community as well. Yeah. And it's so unusual for organizations to take that kind of stance or have that commitment. How, what can people take away is that if so, someone's listening and they want to potentially start something like this, where do they start? Well, um, fortunately, next, next week we are going to receive a group and we are going to have a field engagement here uh, in Brazil and we are going to share uh, our story. But, I mean, if someone wants to activate their consumers or customers, I believe everybody should start with the why question and then move to the what question. And I think we from the credit unions, we are really able to answer the why question because mm -hmm. we have purpose. And we are here to share our experience and our model. But as we talked about the cross-culture uh, uh, topics, I think it's important to take into consideration that the movement is spread all over the world and each country has uh, its own features, right? Its own dynamic. And each community in within a country will have different groups that are that are different and and we want to serve those in unique ways. Yeah, definitely, Brandy. Yes, that's true. And right. so the do you have you had any learning experiences or funny stories or things that have happened along the way? Oh, Brandy, you know, this is a tough one. I don't know if I have a, a, a funny story, but for sure I have lots of experiences. It has been amazing, for example, working with you and the great opportunity that you give to other young professionals around the world as I am here with you. So this is amazing what you are doing and also other leaders from the credit union movement. I'm very honored and grateful to have the opportunity uh, to learn uh, from people like you. Oh, gosh, you're making me emotional. You know, one of the things I absolutely love about you, Giselle, when I've seen you speak at different events or we've been uh, gallivanting the globe together is you always begin presentations with a moment of gratitude. And I find that that practice to be just exemplary. I, I, I want to institute that into the things that I do. So thank you to you for being here and for doing all the things, the impact you're having on others um, as well. So I'd thank like you. to ask you some questions quickly. So we'll call this like a lightning round and I'll ask okay. it fast and you just, whatever the first thing that comes to mind, does that sound good? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I have some easy ones first. The first question is, do you prefer summer or winter? Summer. Yeah, that sunshine all the way, huh? 
Yeah. <laughs> and how about English or Portuguese? English. Yeah. I, English. I was not expecting that. I thought for sure. Portuguese <laughs> is such a beautiful language. And then how about this one? Learn, love, or kick ass? Oh, Brandy, this is a difficult one, but love. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I agree. Okay, fill in the blank. So there'll be a spot in the sentence where you'll fill in. If I could... I would blank every day. I would dance. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I would dance too. I love that. <laughs> Smile is fantastic with it. And the world would be a better place if... We have much more love. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And different programs and activating different individuals in order to do that. And I loved your lesson of making sure that we you start with purpose and start with the why inside because then that lends itself to everything else in the in the process. Is it as a consultant, is it uh in, how do you then go inside? Do you ever feel like you're an outside organization or has it always been very invested? No, I don't feel like that. I, I, I always feel connected with people. I think it depends on how do you act and then it doesn't matter in which culture you are, uh, but I always feel part of the movement. Whatever I'm doing, I, I always feel like I am part of that. And being invested in it. That's amazing. If if you could share a, a bold action item or a takeaway for people, what would that be? Well, this one I prepared especially for you. Okay, Brandy, uh -huh. hold on just a second. I know you like music, uh -huh. so I hope you can hear. Yes, I did. I just hear Journey. Woo! That probably is one of the coolest moments uh, we've ever had. Thank you. I love that. So don't stop believing in yourself and in your power. Nothing can stop you, definitely. Oh, goodness gracious. If people wanted to get a hold of you or connect with you, how would be best to do that? Well, uh, people can uh, get a hold of me through social media. I'm in the LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Oh, thank you so much. We'll post out uh, those things and connections out with our uh, the hot box in the podcast as well. Thank you so much for taking a day in your summer to be here with us and share some of your story. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in Los Angeles this year. Yes, definitely. All right, Thank you good. Thank so very much, Dr. And Brandy Love. Obrigado. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Let's head out to our shout out. Parabéns, meus amigos. Congratulations. Parabéns para vocês estarem aqui no Brasil, nessa linda paisagem aqui, do Mirante do Anamar. Thank you so much for our shout out from Brazil as well. We're so thankful for all the friends that I've met across the globe. Thank you again to Giselle for being here and sharing some of her story with us. I want to bring it all down, boil it down and talk about from a kick-ass place, what can we do today? So if we want to engage and several of us are wanting to engage the next generation. So if you're listening to this and you're just trying to motivate your children to, to be the best that they can be, or if you listen to this and you're wanting to really engage the next generation in conversation, bring out the voices of the people that work for you and with you, how best to go about that. And we have three main things that I want to deliver and give to you today. So when in Engaging and, and activating young people first, embrace authenticity. We're in a world and environment today that allows for people to be authentic and, and we'll talk on the podcast and have talked to the podcast about that authenticity and how we can then embrace it even more. But for, for cases of this, it's really, you'd be hard pressed to work with a young person and not be relevant or not be authentic. Gone are the days 
I would say 50 to 60 year removed are the days where you keep and you hold everything in so much so that that there are that the generation that's growing up now does not know a world without social media, a world without the technology that connects us in the ways that it does. And so it, you'd be hard pressed to convince an individual of that generation to, to not engage and be a part of that. And so it's an interesting phenomenon that's happened. When I first joined the Y Cup, which Giselle and I are fortunate enough to work with together, is it, I went through in 2003. And so that was 17 years ago. It was a really long time ago. And in 2003, I... I had a cell phone, but I never carried it anywhere. And it certainly didn't do anything that cell phones do today. And Facebook and all these other things weren't around, or they certainly weren't in my life at the time. And so with that, the people that I met abroad, we would write each other letters and and keep email addresses and super old school stuff, right? And now when I travel and we go different places, you meet people, you can connect instantly. And that that bringing the world together is so important, but it also has brought a highlight of embracing who we are as as full individuals and embracing that authenticity. Number two is to utilize the digital. I led us into this in talking about social, but when it comes to activating, utilize the technology in the digital environment. And I, I may have shared this, this metaphor as example here on the podcast before, but I look at it as you want to make sure that you're utilizing technology before it is redundant or no longer relevant. And what I mean by that is I like to say that my parents, the, the, the clock on my parents' VCR still flashes. <laughs> Right? And so there's a couple of things with that. One, they still have a VCR. And two, they still don't know how to set it. Same might be true in your in your vehicle or those types of things. So don't let a technology go completely out before we're using it to, to its greatest potential. And finally, number three is live the story. That it the best way to be authentic, the best way to engage with others is, is to live and breathe what it is that you're passionate about. As Giselle mentioned, we want to start with that why, start with what's happening in your, your main purpose and mission in what serving what you do. And so then and have the energy for that. And the people that are following you thus will it's a lot easier to follow a, a Pied Piper who who likes playing the flute, right? I mean, it's it's somebody that is a part of this, somebody that's excited about their mission, then the other people are going to want to be a part of that. There's your top three kick ass. And I just want to share a couple final thoughts if I can. So if we're going to switch it up and just do a couple final thoughts if I can, Scott, here. The main thing when it comes to the hot box is that the learn, the love, the kick ass is more than just our segments. It's more than just the mantra of the podcast. It is how the, the progression that I think that we should all be doing. So whether you're activating the youth, whether you're having conversations in your organization, how are we learning? How are we then taking that learning and building those relationships? And then before you leave a meeting, make sure that you have some action items. And so I think that can play out in all the things that we do, whether it's your personal brand or your own communication with others, learn something, figure out how to work together or build some relationships and choose love. And then finally, write a darn action plan. I don't care if it's a New Year's resolution or it's a goal or it's just a, a checklist of things that you have to get done in the office. The more that you can activate that, the more that you're out there executing. Because all the things that we talk about here on the podcast, all the, the people we bring in from all over the globe, they're bringing these tools and little nuggets. And we could walk away from this conversation. You could turn your car off or finish your treadmill jog or we're Wherever you are in, in, in engaging this with us, one, thank you. But two, what are you going to do about it? Now what? If something popped into your head today that you want to execute on, email yourself. Take a voice memo. Tell Siri. She'll write that down for you. She's listening always. So whatever you have to do to execute, because all of this doesn't happen if, if you don't get out there and make a difference. Thank you so much for being part of the podcast today. Thank you again to Giselle for joining us all the way from Brazil. I appreciate it. If you want to reach out to us, please do so. Website, strategichotbox.com, or on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you need, at Brandy Love, B-R-N-D-I-L-U-V, or at Strategic Hotbox. Until I see you again, get out there and kick some ass.